Hello, my name is Kyle. I am another 20-somethings photographer that's here to teach you about equipment that's older than I am. What I'm mainly here to talk to you about is something that uh, has risen in popularity over the last two months. And that, if you weren't already aware by the title at the bottom of the screen, is the uh, Instax back that you can now get from pretty much any seller um, that's not in the UK. But what we're mainly here to talk about today is the latitude that Polaroid film has because when you come to film photography you sort of are immediately aware that you have to overexpose your image by one stop say so you save the shadow detail. So what we're here to do today is a little exposure test and find out what the uh, the best sort of settings for shooting Polaroid is. <laughs> So what I've set up here is a simple setup where I've got the daylight coming in from the window and I'm just having that fall off naturally through the uh, through the scene. I'm going to do two spot readings to make sure it's right, one on my phone and one on my Sekonic. I'm also doing that because I know that most people or some people won't have a Sekonic light meter, so it's good to just you know, use the phone and show that it, it works. So I'm going to take a meter reading and then after that I'm going to take three photos. One at the recommended exposure and then one stop above and one below. Let's uh, see what happens. So as you can see, I've taken two sets of photos here. Uh, the top is taking meter readings from the pot and the bottom is taking meter readings from the leaves. Uh, I just thought I'd do both to see how the shadows hold up in the Polaroids and the answer is not very well. This is the one stop overexposed one from taking the meter reading on the pot. And as you can see, I'm only just getting details in the leaves and stuff, but the background is just completely gone. So let's move on to the properly exposed photos. This next one is the correctly exposed photo. Um, and as you can see here, we've got a little bit of blowout on the plant pot, but not a crazy amount, like enough that it looks right uh, and enough that it's not hazy or glowing. Here's the one stop overexposed. So this is how you would normally shoot color negative film, one stop over, but as you can see, it's blown out details in the plant pot, but then also even in the leaves as well, you're missing quite a lot of detail. And unless, you know, that's the kind of style that you want to go for, unless you're intentionally blowing something out, if you want that like sort of dreamy aesthetic, then go for it. But uh, I think the general rule of thumb here to go with is that underexposing by a stop or exposing perfectly is the best way to go if you want to sort of retain your blacks and your contrast in your image. So this is the one underexposed. Uh, and as you can see, we've sort of lost some detail in the shadows, but uh, the plant pot is like bang on exposure. The contrast seems fine. Um, yeah, there's not really much to note here. Even the wall on the back is, is okay. Um, but the main thing is that nothing is completely gone, which is something I expected to happen with the, uh, with the underexposed one. I expected it to sort of fall apart, but it's actually not too bad. So I guess in conclusion, the best way to look at using Polaroid film is the same way that you'd use slide film. Because you're shooting an image that's getting developed without any control, you can't retain, if you want to, any of the highlights or pull out any of the shadows if you'd like. You are just sort of stuck with whatever it gives you. And like when you shoot slide film, you have to be really careful with your overexposure, especially because there's just no... There's no way you can pull it back if it's blown out. After doing this test, I went out and shot a little bit more just to make sure that I was happy with, you know, the results that I got and to make sure it was accurate. And all in all, it was pretty much bang on. The only thing I'd note is that you want to shoot your exposure bang on to what it says, apart from if your subject is a brighter color, if it's a white or a light blue or something like that. In those instances, you want to stop down by about half a stop. This just means that the areas that you're exposing to are going to go from that 50% exposure line to that 70% exposure line and you're going to retain more of your shadows. So if you're shooting a subject in, you know, direct sunlight or if you're shooting a subject that's a bright color like a yellow or something, then it just means it won't just solo that one color out. You know, you won't just see that one thing in the photo. You'll be able to see some of the shadow detail as well. But of course, all of this is subjective. You do whatever you want. This is photography. I'm not here to tell you how to do things. I'm just here to show you what I found out. Either way, I hope this uh, test was some use to you and uh, you learned something new.